Mr. Brain Freeze. Hi, Chicho. My condolences to anyone Turkish or si indeed, indeed. No, very much, very much. And it's not uh, just those who are Turkish and Syrian that died. There were people from other nationalities there as well, right? Uh, but people in uh, Turkey and Syria, indeed. And 7.5, a 7.8 initial hit. I'm a geophysicist. It's a weird thing to say, but earthquakes, earthquakes and tornadoes and natural disasters, not disasters, but natural events, uh, geologic events intrigue me. That's one of the reasons I went into geophysics, right? And earthquakes, especially, the, the energy being released on earthquakes is on effing believable, right? Like the energy being released in an earthquake is phenomenal phenomenal right and it's a richter scale right it's uh logarithmic it's powers of 10 right how much more powerful is a two compared to a one 10 times how much more powerful is a three compared to a one a hundred times how much more powerful is a four compared to a one a thousand times right now just imagine san francisco back in whatever time got hit with a 6.5 or whatever it was pretty devastating for it. this was 7.8 over 10 times more powerful right huge huge and uh, by the way just regarding the earthquake because i've been following some of the news it got hit uh, from what i understand it got hit with a 7.8 right it had a follow-up of a 7.5 right and you know some people are going down a rabbit hole unnecessarily to a certain degree well you don't want to go down there but everyone's going oh there's hundreds of earthquakes happening now you know, there's been a five, a four, a four and a half, six and a half, blah, 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 blah. But that's what happens when you have a large earthquakes. There are hundreds of uh, earthquakes that happen before, after it, right? And if you, with earthquakes, I remember studying earthquake predictions and stuff. If you're able to do things in real time and process the data and have it all available online, usually before a major, right, there's a, there's a peak there's a buildup right there's pressures being released there's a lot of things that happen right uh, so the hundreds of earthquakes after the 7.8 and 7.5 are normal and those are normal right uh, the reason I'm using the word normal is because uh, as a geophysicist I can honestly tell you uh, there's no doubt in my mind there are earthquake machines out there just like there's we can we can manipulate the weather right <laughs> So there are interesting rabbit holes. You can go down the whole thing, right? Allegot, I'm in Birmingham, UK, UK. Huckleberry, uh, hey Chicho, been a while. Uh, love to see it. <laughs> Thanks and Joe Paul is indeed. Bon matin, je noir. Um, Plutonic pluralists, hello, hello. Welcome over and we can get a couple of pints of Guinness indeed, or Kilkenny. <laughs> Amsterdam, best window shopping. Aha, uh -huh. it was dark, man. Amsterdam, it was dark for the first five minutes. I was like, wow, wow, wow. And I was indulging, of course. And then after five minutes, I was like, oh man, this is really dark. Uh, coffee shopping, I like the coffee shopping aspect of it. Like, love the coffee shopping aspect of it. Uh, Lions, I heard Turkey shifted three meters. That's a huge distance for a whole nation to share. It's huge. 7.8 is gigantic. Uh, from what I remember, uh, an earthquake of magnitude 11 or 12 will will crack the earth. Right? <laughs> that's, that's how serious we're talking about. Logarithmic, right? Huckleberry. I think natural disasters seem like they're getting more common. I'm not sure there's a conspiracy behind it or anything like that, but it's uh, definitely good concerning uh, volcanic activities kicking up from more stuff solar flares are kicking up um or could we could be going up to a ice age but i haven't followed it as in depthly i used to i used to do joe chicho uh isn't a devastating earthquake happening in los angeles just a matter of time before it sits on a fall oh well, for sure it's a matter of time the question is we're talking geologic time scale right me and you live on a human time scale right so where i am right now which is west coast of canada up here this is on the same fault line as the san andreas fault line oh sorry up here not down that's mexico the san andreas fault line going through uh, 
California, going through uh, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Andreas kicks up here to where I am. But the fault line, or a branch of it anyway, there's lots of fault lines here, right? Uh, the fault lines in West Coast of California are uh, closer, they're shallow, right? So the earthquakes that happen there, they're closer to the uh, to to population centers uh, because it's more densely populated, as well as closer to the Earth's surface, right? The fault line that goes through off the coast of Vancouver Island, west coast of Canada, that's a deeper fault line, right? And it's a little bit off coast. So that earthquake, this earthquake here that would be happening at some point is not going to be as devastating as one that would happen in Southern California if it was the same magnitude, right? Because it's deeper where I am. Right, and that matters as well. Uh, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Ch -ch -ch. Cheryl, how are you doing? Salutations, salutations. On charter days, hey Chicho, been a long time since I caught a stream. Hope all is well. Indeed, indeed. Plutonic power of Turkey is the possible place for the biblic great flood, possibly. Noah's Ark is on. Uh, Noah's Ark is uh, on Mount Ararat right supposedly okay that's where the the ship was found uh what do you call it uh, fossilized i believe i think maybe not fossilized but petrified maybe uh mr robotop how are you doing checking in from the road love maps always good to know where you are and where you're going indeed lions uh is a 12 magnitude earthquake probable um in this current time no 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 the highest we've had i think was a 9.5 maybe it was alaska uh, it was alaska and it happened off the coast here and it shifted the land i'm going by memory gang that i studied like 30 years ago right but for what, what i remember it lifted parts of alaska up six meters or 15 feet or 15 meters something like that so six meters or 15 meters or 15 you know metric versus imperial right so it lifted it up huge chunks of alaska created a gigantic tidal wave that went down here and went uh towards japan and stuff uh that was huge right so just imagine if you can do the mathematics here let's do the mathematics the one in turkey the one in turkey was 7.8 right so 7.8 right 7.8 earthquake in turkey okay the aftershock or the next big one was 7.5 right and there's like hundreds of earthquakes happening below here that are anywhere between six lower right down to 3.53 3 and lower as well right okay now if you want to know what the uh, how much more powerful one earthquake is relative to another earthquake you do this right so forget this part right because we don't care about the little aftershocks they're still gonna knock stuff down right they're gonna knock down buildings because a lot of buildings that didn't go down initially with the 7.8 and 7.5 they're cracked right so they're gonna go down with these guys six it'll take down buildings six and a half it'll take down building even five and a half when building structures have been compromised they'll take them down right especially in certain parts of the world right uh that earthquake earthquake proof buildings are not earthquake proof right but if you want to know the uh the difference right the how much more powerful a 7.8 is relative to 7.5 you put it to the base 10 and you do a division right so seven uh, sorry 10 to the power of 7.8 divided by 10 to the power 7.5 so here i'll punch this in from my end too you guys do it from your end too i'm a little slow on my computer calculator so here uh 10 to the power of 7.8 okay equals but doing it's huge divided by 10 to the power of 7.5 7.5 
Doink. Oh, because it's... Um, okay, hold on. I gotta do it like this. So basically, dude, don't do it the way I did it. I, I'm trying to think of a... Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> doing it with a... As if it was a graphing calculator. So you would do this. When you're doing division of powers, it's 10 to the power of 7. I don't want to go into the rules of this, but you subtract these, right? So you go 10 point... 10 to the power 7.8 minus 7.5 which is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 so all you got to punch in is 10 to the power of 0 0.3 to find out how much more powerful it is right so 10 to the power of 0 0.3 not in my physics teaching uh mindset right laying the stuff out uh to the power of 0.3 okay so it ends up being twice as more powerful right so 7.8 so this ends up being basically 1.99 what was it nine 1.99 something something eight something what was it five nine point nine point nine nine five you round it up to two decimal places even it's 2.0 right so 7.8 you know, let's bring up a fresh run so 10 to the power of 7.8 divided by 10 to the power of 7.5 is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 and this is equal to 2. So two times more powerful was the next earthquake. Was the first the first earthquake was twice as powerful as the next one that hit in a couple of hours, right? Or whatever number of time. It was within a day or something, right? Now in Alaska, I believe, I believe we had 10 to the power of 9.6 9.4 i think let's 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 be on the safe side or average it out 9.5 happened in alaska okay might have been a 9.2 let's go 9.2 let's go 9.2 so in alaska we had an earthquake of 10 to the power of 9.2 okay extremely powerful divided by earthquake in turkey 10 to the power of 7.7.8 so this is going to be oops that's supposed to be a 2 okay so this is going to be 10 to the power of 9.2 minus 7.8 okay so what is that subtraction is 92 92 minus 7.8 8 times 12 4 uh, 7 1 1 1.4 10 to the power of 1 whoops 1.4 okay punch down your calculator see what you get apologies for not reading the chat uh, I get distracted with numbers easy. <laughs> it's like, look, Chicho numbers. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> to the power of 1.4. 1 1.4. Right? That's 25 times more powerful. Right? So one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded happened early, early 19th century, early 1900s. Right? Was in alaska up here and that was 25 times more powerful than the earthquake that just happened in turkey and syria right 25 times more powerful right now the death toll in turkey last i heard was around 6,000. that's going to kick up to who knows like really uh, we don't know uh, we can do it we can do an estimation Right, or guesstimation, uh, most likely the death toll is going to kick up into 20, 30,000, right? That's what the odds are. There's 30,000 people missing. I don't know like how fast people can get to them and stuff like this, but it's going to be well over 20,000, I'm pretty sure, right? Just imagine what the death toll would be if an earthquake hit that was 25 thousand uh, 25 times more powerful than what just hit there right so so 5400 uh death toll right now okay 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 thanks joe uh oh very interesting has there been an earthquake yeah there was an earthquake in turkey and syria mr brain freeze i think uh they measured this earthquake even in japan with magnitude 0.1.2 wow 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 yeah this would have been richter scales would have been going off all over the world right as a geophysicist you'd be i i had a teacher in high school grade 12 a geology teacher in high school and earthquake prediction is a huge thing okay 
uh, Joe, another source says uh, 6,200. Yeah, that might have been one that I heard this morning. Um, but I'll tell you a story about Earth scientists, geophysicists, and stuff like this. Earthquake prediction is a huge thing, right? Like, really, it's a huge thing. People want to know how to predict earthquakes because if you can predict earthquakes, you can save a lot of lives, right? Um, and it means you understand a lot more about the Earth. I had a teacher in grade 12, geology teacher, an earth science teacher in grade 11, geology teacher in grade 12. He heard there was a good prediction. We were in Vancouver, right? There was a prediction that there was going to be an earthquake in Japan at a certain period. I, I can't remember when it was. It was the 70s, maybe, or early 80s. He, he heard about this prediction. And he flew to Japan. He flew to Japan. Because he heard there was going to be an earthquake and he wanted to be in a huge earthquake, right? He'd never been in a huge earthquake. He was aching for it, right? He stayed there, I believe, two weeks. He told the story to us, right? A week or two weeks and the earthquake didn't happen, right? So he got on the plane and on his way to Vancouver, the earthquake hit, right? Um, and he kicked himself for getting on the plane and flying back. But he, there's, there isn't anything you could do. I can't remember when this was. And it was an earthquake, if I go by memory, six something that it hit, right? Elder God, I thought the Chile earthquake is still the most powerful earthquake in 1960. Fortunately, a low death toll. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I know the Alaska one was one of the biggest ones. I don't think it was the biggest one. But one of the reasons the Alaska one didn't have that huge of a death toll was because in early 1900s there weren't that many people living in alaska even right now there isn't that many people living in alaska so earthquake death toll and natural disaster death toll really depends on population density right huge 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 uh lines slightly off topic but for the scale of the disaster it's barely being covered in the news at least in ireland anyway ireland is really good with the news uh geopolitically turkey isn't on great terms with eu nato i wonder if uh mainstream media isn't showing it as much as a way of uh, uh, shunning them maybe maybe uh or was this uh part of the turkey will regret not allowing uh finland and sweden to join nato right it, if you want to go down the rabbit hole what is the reason we don't get earthquakes up in northern europe what is the difference between here and there uh tectonic activity tectonic plates like just imagine all this land mass all of this used to be all together in one lump called pangea i believe that's the word and it's split off to Gondwana land or something else i can't remember and basically all of the plates like right here this is the mid-atlantic ridge right goes through right mid-atlantic ridge what this is is two plates that used to be together right so these guys used to be here okay and then a crack formed because of mantle so basically take this here let's assume this so let's assume we're here right so here's usa or north america let's say america right uh okay i'm gonna get a new sheet Boink. writing like this is difficult america okay and here's africa right okay africa right so here's america here's africa right now they're like this right In the past, they were like this. And what's happened is at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, if you consider this the crust, okay, and then in the bottom here, there's, that's the crust. Here's the mantle, mantle. And we're drawing a line here. So this is in the past, right? This is not included here right mantle there's convection currents going like this and the mantle is malleable 
right? So when these guys were together, this convection current was doing this and splitting the plates apart, right? So this is where that was happening. So these guys slowly move away from each other and there's lots of different plates that are all over the place. Like every, all of these ridges, everything you see, like everything together, right? Now, what happens? Here's a here, here's the reason why we get earthquake activity. In uh, there's different types of earthquake activity. You can get plates doing this. Uh, so, so just imagine these lines being plate. So top view, top view, top view. Here's one type of uh, earthquake you can have. One plate going like this and another one going like this, right? So these two plates would do this. If you live in an area where the plates are moving across from each other, they go like this. Now, the plates aren't looped, right? So they're not smoothing gently across each other, right? It's rough. So the plates, usually they're being pushed. Well, they could be being pushed together, right? They're rough right so you push you push, you push you push and then it does this that is your earthquake right the energy release there is unbelievable right let me do this another type of earthquake tectonic activity you can have is the ocean crust right is heavier than continental crust right so what i drew here okay Consider this part, the ocean crust, and this is the continental crust, right? So continental crust is lighter than the oceanic crust rocks. So what happens if you're floating something on top of something lighter when they meet, right? Because another type of activity you can have is plates, again, top view, coming towards each other, right? So if one plate, the ocean is heavier than the continental, right? One thing that happens is when they meet, so those are top view, here's side view, side view, oops, view, side view for this one would be like this. Here's the continental plate. Here's the oceanic or oceanic crust. It sinks, right? These are the trenches deepest parts of the ocean really right so what we have is this plate coming this way this plate it's not plate uh, this plate coming this way uh but this cr this part of the crust is oceanic this is continental so what what it does it does this right so mm, let me do this so it's going the right way okay so this so this is the ocean coming down it goes down right and it's the same type of effect. We're over here. Sorry, my head. I got to balance it. It's the same type of effect. It's not smooth sailing. Just do, 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 do. It's not loop. Again, it does this. That is an earthquake, right? Devastating, devastating. Another type of uh, plate activity you can have is two plates of the same density here, right? India, Himalaya. Uh, him, uh, Mount Everest and stuff like this, they meet, and if they're the same density, then whoop, they go up. Mountains, right? Mountains. You can get mountains as well when the oceanic is going down and crunches up the uh, continental, and the continental makes mountains. So super cool stuff uh, goes on, right? Uh, super cool stuff goes on, um, and we live on this planet on this amazing planet right amazing planet we're all conflict we're all conflict <laughs> gang i missed a lot of chat apologies i i don't know if i'm gonna go up check it out let me check it out uh shino name of the guy who flew to japan and missed the earthquake i can't give you the name i can't give you the name <laughs> i can't out the guy <laughs> with tonic words chicho and you're uh uh, estimation thank you very much for the follow uh mid midriath uh sounds uh elvin uh 
in your estimation how much do we humans know about the earth build up and the possible different layers beneath us and the mechanics of plate tectonics we, we know a fair bit we know a fair bit the only thing i would i wish i came across regarding the earth um because this wasn't taught to me when i was studying uh at university doing geophysics and geology or sciences and all this jazz right we were taught that uh, petrocarbons right uh, oil okay gas was a byproduct of organic matter right it was years later uh, early 2000s when i left geophysics right that i came across the i forget what the theory is called it's a russian theory um, Russian scientists came up with it that they say oil is actually a byproduct of the mantle, right? It's mantle uh, coming up and it's renewable because it will always be there, way more than what we need. And uh, the whole theory of uh, oil being a byproduct of organic life i guess if you want to call it uh is bunk uh it's really existent in the mantle and it's deep and it percolates its way up i'm not so sure if i believe it um i would have to look into it but i'm not as interested in that topic as other topics we only have so much time right in our lives Joe Chicho, I've just looked at a map of the tectonic plates and you can see that the earthquake happened right on the Eurasian and Arabian plate border. So it happened here, I believe, right? So Eurasian plate here and Arabic plate here. Is that what it is? Arabian plate there. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, Midriath. Uh, saying thank you for explaining hello hello what is what if the both plates are moving away from each other uh volcanoes it, this is this is two plates moving away from each other and we get there is volcanic activity all along here right mid-atlantic ridge right this is basically new earth being created right and here let's did we say we we're gonna map <laughs> conflicts so we're talking geology awesome awesome so check this out check this out map view side view here's map uh top view oh sorry top view top view view and side view or profiles let's call it side view side view okay Here's Mid-Atlantic Ridge. We're going to draw the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Mid-Atlantic Ridge is... How are we going to draw this? Right. America over here, way over here. Africa way over there, right? So let's put those on here. Africa. Africa. America. And I say America because it's not just the U.S. It's south america north america central america right so africa sorry you can't read that america plate here's the convection currents of the mantle and the crust is very thin right very very thin right like if you consider the earth right the earth crust is smoother than an apple crust okay so all these mountains, Everest and stuff you see, if you really compare it, do a comparison, shrink it down to a size of an apple, it's smoother than your typical apple that you pick up from the store, right? Just keep that in mind. That's how thin the crust is, right? So convection currents coming up here, and what happens, there's a split here, right? It's like this, right? So magma comes up, And continues to push these things away from each other so new earth is being created here right new earth is coming up volcanic activity ground being created and doing a split right from the top if you let's say here's the ridge right 
here's the ridge let's say this is the volcanic activity new crust is being formed what's one of the one of the things uh, what's one of the evidences that we have about new crust being formed is linked up with us knowing realizing that the magnetic field of the earth flips right poof poof from the north to the south right and magnetic field of the earth flipping is a huge 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 gigantic enormous right because magnetic field of the earth protects us from solar radiation right from space right? it keeps everything in it's a shield right magnetic shield right aurora borealis and stuff like this right so what I, the way we know this is this when magma comes up right it's and when it's underground it's called magma when it comes up top it's called lava right and it's liquid and it has ions in it right charges charged minerals right something that is in, that is charged when it's put under a magnetic uh, field it lines up according to the magnetic field right so when the earth magnetic field let's say in north is pointing up Doink. when north is pointing up the new magma the minerals if you look at them they line up this way the north that way and south this way we know that the earth's magnetic field flips is because these are called striations if you go over a certain amount of distance right and look at continue looking at the minerals all of a sudden the minerals in a certain strip along the earth's uh, oceanic crust line up in the other direction they're saying north is down what north is down what the f is going on and then you keep on going north is up and then north is down and then north is up right and then north is down whoop, whoop, whoop. goes like this so all along here we see the minerals in the crust of the ocean pointing in different directions right okay this is crazy cool and i learned about this i learned you know we learned about this in school and stuff like this but here's a story that the same teacher that i had that flew from vancouver to japan to be in an earthquake here's what he told us he was studying at university in the 1960s he said he was sitting in uh his class right he was sitting in his class at university and the professor came in and said okay everyone's got their textbooks he goes, he goes yeah everyone pulled out there he goes pull out your textbook he goes, okay pull out the textbook this is in the 1960s right and he goes okay go go to chapter whatever five and all the way to chapter seven and everyone went chapter five to chapter seven right and he goes tear them out they're like what he goes tear that those pages out tear them out I was like, what? What do you mean? Why tear them out? This is this is what happened in the 1960s, right? So when when certain so-called scientists, so certain people, um, this is by the way, uh, vitamins uh, the, the thing in there. Certain people come and say, Rod Rodriguez one. Thank you very much for the follow. -up. When certain people right uh low iq people some of them scientists come out and say the science is settled the science is never settled never settled right so this professor came in in 1960s to my teacher in the 1980s right 20 years later he was teaching this stuff came in and said tear those pages out and this is the reason right because during world war ii okay I believe it was American submarines when they were transversing the Atlantic when they were going across the Atlantic I'm pretty sure other countries did this as well they used to carry uh, uh, sort of metal detectors magnetometers right in the submarines right and when they were trans when they were going across the ocean floor or a little bit above it they were measuring magnetism because they're looking for things right maybe other submarines right? <laughs> bad ones or good ones or allies or whatever so all of a sudden 
they were mapping out the Atlantic going back and forward, right? Because the war is here and submarines are here. So Americans were doing this a lot, right? A lot of submarines. Wee, 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 wee. They were creating all this data, right? And what happens back then anyway, uh, there was a 25 year no releasing of information, okay, gag order on anything related to the war uh, in the United States. That's what the rules said, right? I'm going by memory, gang, so look into all this stuff, right? So there was 25 years of silence, everything top secret, nothing being released, right? So 1960s, right, mid-1960s, go back 25 years, you're in 1940, right? 1940 1945 right around that period all of a sudden all this data came available right so if you're an earth scientist geologist geophysicist geophysicist would have looked at this like drooling right they looked at all this data and went oh my gosh right make this friendly child friend oh my gosh the earth's magnetic field flips why is it flipping oh my gosh all those people that said, hey, wow, look at the coincidence, the coincidences. Africa sort of fits nicely as a puzzle with America, right? Well, I wonder what, and then there's other places that sort of fit well together. Wow, what coincidences, right? In the 1960s, they found out, oh, wow, there's something called the Mid-Atlantic Trade. Plate tectonics came into existence, the theory of it, right? And magnetic earth magnetic field flipping link that up with paleontology you get major extinction events when earth magnetic field flips you understand earthquakes better you all of a sudden the door was opened right wow we learned so much about the earth just because just because of the data that was released right that was collected during world war ii by let's say the allies right and once that information was released, our whole understanding of planet Earth completely shifted. Brilliant, right? Brilliant, right? Phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm all the way down to the bottom of posting, gang. I sort of went off on a rant, but this is this is my love. I love this stuff. So, Felix, how did you show? How's life? In my life. I've almost finished recording a full song with one of my friends. Not to boast, but I think it sounds... Actually, share it with us, Felix. Share it with us. Put mouth. So we might get a Papa a Pangea again one day. We will. Yeah. The odds are we will at some point when things merge together. Or Gondwana land. Chunks. Right? Chunks. Kafmet Fika. Such a good answer. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> You asked me a simple question, I went ballistic, right? And we did a little math, lines. Who got the rock, man, uh, talking about earthquakes? <laughs> exactly. Plutonic fluids, Chicho. How catastrophic or harmless could a pole shift be? It, it would be catastrophic, not harmless, because it's not going to happen within a second. It's a shift, because the Earth's magnetic field it has a wobble to it it deviates from true north right so earth magnetic field deviates from true north uh true north right and some people say when the deviation becomes more and more all of a sudden it's just going to go woo, woo, right but that woo, it's not within a second it might i don't know i forget it. it might take months for it to really do that shift or weeks or years to do that shift uh it'll be it'll be an extinction event for certain species because um like i you know i know very little about biology or plants and animals and stuff i i know i know some because i <laughs> i watch a lot of documentaries they even that bro rugs right um but birds and a lot of aquatic animals and stuff um they use the magnetic field to for migration paths and stuff like this and um, if the magnetic field shifts you know where are they going to go right they end up somewhere else and that could be devastating 
extreme tidal earthquakes, <laughs> maybe night pole shift as in north uh, and south pole switching magnetic fields. Yeah, yeah. Or is it pole shift something else? No, pole shift is that the magnetic field flipping and the magnetic fields from the crust from the mantle of the earth, right? So, you know, sorry, flat or people, but crust mantle would be like this uh, not mantle sorry the outer core right so here's the inner core the inner core solid right this is mantle this is outer core core right the outer core has is liquid right it moves around when you move charge and this gets into physics when you move charge you create a magnetic field right so moving charge <laughs> 980 <laughs> when you move charge you create a magnetic field and the outer core is full of ions right and there's charge moving so it's create magnetic field and earth's magnetic field would be if that's north wink and that south point we're going wing 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 right fun stuff fun stuff should we get into mapping world conflicts that's a quick geology tectonic plate lesson the flat earth magnetic field could be similar or different inside of a comparison could be I haven't looked into the magnetic field of the stuff uh, for uh, the flat earth series. I looked some stuff, and, uh, haven't convinced me enough to deep down to uh, dig into it yet. By the way, gang, as far as snacks goes, we were able to get our hands some plump quince. Okay, and quince is heavy fruit, it's super good. As you know, I've made, jazz, I've made jazz out of this. But quince every now and then when it's ripe like this, when it's bulky, it has a very unique taste and I like. And this will last me like a week. Then I'll keep on cutting off like chunks and eating it. It's on the dry side. With such a unique flavor. So good. Baby nights, yeah. I just read the last pull shift happened 780,000 years ago. And supposedly it happened 183 times in the last 83 million years. Sheesh, I always knew about that but never really thought about uh, how it would affect us. It would, it would be huge. And that's, remember again, we live on human time span, right? These are geologic events we're talking about. We're high frequency on a larger wave. Right? 